How are you? This is Oliver Fernandez with The Imperfect Entrepreneur. Today we're going to talk about finding the right team members and then once you find them, how do you know that they're going to be someone that can come into your organization and actually do things that are going to help add value to the organization, grow the organization and get the organization ultimately closer to its vision. This past weekend, my in-laws, sister-in-law and brother-in-law, made the final move from California to Virginia. And we went out there, me, Leah, my daughter, who's two and a half now, and my son, who's two, is, is basically five months, went out there and visited them for the first time. And it was so cool and seeing them be so close together. And then at the end of the night, being able to go back home, it was a, it was a cool experience. So I've been doing a lot of hiring, a lot of finding the right talent, you know, making mistakes, trying to build a team over the last two years. And been looking at a ton of resumes, been having my fishing lines in the, in the, uh, in the water, right? Like, I don't know when that person's going to come, but like my lines have been in the water consistently over the last year, year and a half. And as I'm like reflecting on that time and thinking about like, oh, the, the team members that came on and that have been really, really good and the team members that have come on and been really ult- ultimately horrible and, and like, especially in comparison to the expectations that we, we had in the very beginning, I'm like, what is the key differentiator here? And I'm like, man, the number one thing for me has been, can that person get to the finish line and can is I always like and after looking at it it's like I like to hire from the top down now and what I mean by that is the top down isn't like oh hiring a CFO and the CIO and oh, CTO and all these big C level C letter words the top down means it's like can someone start something and finish something get to the finish line like there's so many people out there that can just do that like one little task and then like, hey, I'm done that task, what's next? Hey, I'm done that task, what's next? And like, those people are great to add on after you have that person that can get to the finish line, start something and get to the finish line. But if you would bring those people on while you're trying to grow and scale, those people that just can do that specific task and then they're like, hey, what's next? Like, it's, it's bogs down the whole organization. They can't take anything off your plate. But someone who can get from point A to point B, like I can give them a submittal and they can get it through the process and get the project running and, and, and handle RFIs and do handle change orders and handle subcontracts. They can get the project from A to Z. That's someone I can build with. But someone that I got to constantly tell the next thing to do is someone that it's really hard for me to build with as like the, the leader of the organization, someone that's trying to grow, trying to someone that's trying to scale, that's someone that has duties and responsibilities already on my own plate to really be able to handhold someone like that. And then once we have those those high level performers in the finance department, in the finance department, in the marketing department, in the uh, operations side, in the HR people development side, then we can hire those the, the, the people that come in and do this, the individual tasks and grow them over time to be someone that can start something from A and get to Z. So for me, it's, it's hiring someone that can get from A to Z, someone from the top, and then we, we, we can then build from, from, the top, from the top down. Like when that person needs additional support, like we, my finance guy, I brought him on and he was able to handle so much from a standpoint of like finance and operations, right? And then as, as we got busy and things were really rocking and rolling, we brought on someone underneath him that could handle all the, the data entry. And it was amazing because I didn't have to get involved in any of that. My person that could get from point A to point to Z was able to handle all the back and forth communications on what do I do here, what do I do there? And it like allowed the organization to grow, allowed the organization to push to a different level. So I always hire from the top down 
make sure I have that key contributor in place, and then I could hire the, 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 the other team members to support that person and, and do the individual tasks that can help us get to the end outcome. The second thing that I'm always looking for in people is I need someone that has big goals. Like, there's so many people that, that can do amazing things and they, they have a great resume and then they, 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 they've, they've actually executed on what I need them to execute on. The one thing that's missing is that they don't have big goals. And when you don't have big goals, the problem is you're now holding someone accountable to something and they're already satisfied. So what does that mean? They don't care. They don't want to push to the next level. They're not willing to, to put in the extra work, to, 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 go, to go through the ups and downs. They're not willing to go through the trials and tribulations. They quit. They, they can't, they don't, they're, they're not in it to win it. They don't want it that bad. So I love people with big goals. I'm never intimidated when someone comes to me and says, I want to make 150 grand. I want to make 200 grand. I want to make 300 grand. I'm not intimidated by that, honestly. I've actually come to embrace that because now I know I have someone who's a hitter, someone that is willing to come in and, and has wants something big. And now it's my job. It's my responsibility to hold them accountable to those targets that they want. They want to take their family on a trip to Italy. They want to, they want to send their kid to a private school. They want to, they want to go to the, the, the Super Bowl. Now it's my job to hold them accountable to that. So when the trials and tribulations come, I remind them, remember you want to do this? This is the stuff you got to fight through. You got to push through. You got to shove. You got to make things happen right now in this moment to be able to go do those things. And those are the people that are that, that I, 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 I resonate most with. The people that have goals that, that don't come in and like, oh, you know, like I want to make X. And they're already making X and they're satisfied, they're good, they want to go home, you know, they, 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 there's nothing motivating them. They're, there's, they're not striving for anything in life. They're, they're, they've already achieved it all. They're good. Like, I've always continued to elevate and graduate, elevate and graduate. Like, yeah, my first thing was I wanted to take care of me. Then once it was taking care of me, I want to take care of my sisters and my family and my mom. And then after it was taking care of, I, I want to be able to take care of my wife and my kids and... And then it was just like, now it's like, what organizations, what community of uh, contri uh, contributors can we now contribute to? So like, for me, it's always been like expansion in terms of like the goal, in terms of like who we can provide for, who we can help support. So the goals have always gotten bigger, which has allowed me not to be satisfied because I did get satisfied and it was miserable. I was so like defeated. I was, I thought... I was literally like, didn't really have a purpose. And for me, that was a scary place to be in. I, I, I had things tangibly that I always wanted to work for and I, and I, and I checked off the box, but I didn't reset the box to have more things to, 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 to be able to, to, to support, to be able to have a purpose, an internal reason why I'm getting up every morning. And I'm so glad that I was able to do understand that about myself because now I can understand that about other people and now understand that when I'm bringing on new team members and finding them and trying to attract them and align them with the business, I need to work with someone that has goals. Or And if I don't find someone that has goals, then it's basically going to be that same exact situation, but in a different person. And there's, there's no, there's, there really isn't an alignment because that person isn't committed to the goal. And if the organization is committed to the goal, I'm committed to the goal, and everybody else is committed to the goal, and we bring on team members that are not committed to the goal, we're going to have big problems. We're going to have really big problems. And the, the third thing that I've realized over the last year and a half of grinding it out with finding and attracting and, and, and aligning team members to the organization is that you're gonna make mistakes. You're gonna make mistakes. You're gonna make mistakes in the process. You're gonna make mistakes in 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 in, in thinking someone's the right person, but they're not. And the only way to overcome that is to just continue to continue to do it. And 
now you've you, you now I've because I've continued to do it, I now understand and I can and can see the areas where I know that's going to be a problem, so I stay away from that person. Oh, I, I know this is not going to work out, so I stay away from that person. But I never would have been able to see it if I hadn't made the first mistakes or the second mistakes. But I, I stopped it there. I didn't continue to make the same mistake over and over again. And now we've been on a really good rhythm of, of finding and attracting the right people and bringing them in the organization and showing them how they can win in the organization and showing them how this is the vehicle for them to hit their goals. But and in order for them to hit the goals, we need to stay focused on the business and have the business hit, hit its goals. And then we can have our team members hit, hit their goals. So with that, as you're continuing to grow and scale, people are... are, are are one of the most important, or if not the most important aspect of scaling. So take those lessons. Number one, you want to be around someone that has top down. So they, they, they can get a project from A to B. Someone that can take a project and get it to execution. You don't want to be babysitting that person. And if you are babysitting that person, it just, it, it, it takes your attention off of growing the business to helping that person get the task done, which is you're already out of alignment. Number two is you need someone who has goals. You need someone, that, I like people that have big goals because if they have big goals, then we can really hold them accountable to them. And they have to not just only have big goals, they have to care about those goals. Because a lot of people will just talk about big goals, but what are they willing to do to get those goals is, is the thing. And obviously it needs to be ethically, morally, and legally, right? And then and number three is there's going to be mistakes, but you continue to keep your fishing lines in the water. That's been one of my key phrases or frameworks over the last year and a half is don't pull the positions. Keep the fishing lines in the water so that we're constantly attracting the right people. We're constantly having the opportunity to meet the right people and bring them on into the organization and show them how they can win with the organization. And so that we can continue to grow and scale and continue to build our legacy. So let's roll and have a great day.